I'm gonna have to find my tripod. So this way this works better with the phone. The phone's actually really hard to stay up. All right, Karina Baby today is Mother's Day. Today is May the 9th, and we have 20 knobbly knees. Let's take a look. Twenty knobbly knees, nineteen rigidy fleas, eighteen building blocks, seventeen chirpy chicks, sixteen squiggly snakes, fifteen fancy cakes, fourteen flying bats, thirteen hanging hats, twelve kooky frogs, eleven slippery logs, ten teddy bears, nine old chairs, eight twinkling stars, seven racing cars, six bright coats, five sailing boats, four favorite books, three curl quarreling cooks, two tickling, two ticking clocks, one old sock. So 20 knobbly knees. They have 20 things, right? That seem to be completely random. In our next book, we have Yesterday we did Here Comes Peter Cottontail. Today we have The Adventure of Pinocchio. Let's take a look at this Pinocchio's nose. Ooh, look at that. The Adventures of Pinocchio. Pinocchio's nose grows longer. As soon as the three doctors had left the room, the fairy went to Pinocchio's bed and touching him on the forehead, noticed that he was burning with fever. She took a glass of water, put a white powder in it, and hanging it to the marinette, said lovely to him, Drink this, and it's a few days you'll be up and well. It does take a few days to get better, right? So when you don't feel good, it's okay to take a few days to just rest and relax. And if you have a fever, it's okay to have ice pops and ice cream and something cold that will bring down that fever. Right? So, Pinocchio looked at the glass, made a weary face, and asked in a whining voice, Is it sweet or bitter? It is bitter, but it is good for you. It is bitter. I don't want it. Drink it. I don't like anything bitter. Drink it, and I'll give you a lump of sugar, and take the bitter taste out of your mouth. Where's the sugar? Here it is, said the fairy, taking a lump from her golden sugar bowl. I want the sugar first, then I'll drink the bitter water. Do you promise? Yes. The fairy gave him the sugar, and Pinocchio, after chewing and swallowing it in a twinkling, said, smacking his lips, if only sugar were medicine, I should take it every day. Now keep your promise and drink those few drops of water. They'll be good for you. Pinocchio took the glass in both his hands and stuck his nose into it. He lifted it to his mouth and once more stuck his nose into it. It is too bitter, much too bitter. I can't drink it. How do you know when you haven't even tasted it? I can't imagine it. I smell it. I want another lump of sugar. Then I'll drink it. The fairy with... All the patience of the good mother gave him more sugar and again handed him the glass. I can't drink it like that, the marinette said, making more weary faces. Why? Because it is because that feather pillow on my feet bothers me. The fairy took away the pillow. It's no use. I can't drink it even now. What's the matter now? I don't like the way... That door looks. It's half open. The fairy closed the door. I won't drink it, cried Pinocchio, bursting out crying. I won't drink this awful water. I won't. I won't. No, 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 no. Let's look at Pinocchio again. This is the next page. So see his nose is growing and his nose is growing even longer. Let's see what it says. My boy, you'll be sorry. I don't care. You are very sick. I don't care. In a few hours, the fever will take you far away to another world. I 
don't care. Aren't you afraid of death? Not a bit. I'd rather die than drink that awful medicine. At that moment, the door of the room flew open and the and in came four rabbits as black as ink, carrying a small black coffin in on their shoulders. What do you want from me? asked Pinocchio. We have come for you, said the, said the, largest, la the largest rabbit. For me? But I'm not dead yet. No, not dead yet, but you will be in a few moments, since you have refused to take the medicine, which would have made you well. Oh, fairy, my fairy, the maraschino cried out. Give me that glass. Quick, please, I do not want to die. No, no, not yet, not yet. And holding that glass with two hands, he swallowed the medicine in one gulp. Well said, the four rabbits. This time we have made the trip for nothing. And turning their on their heels, they marched solemnly out of the room, carrying their little black coffin, and muttering, and grumbling between them between their teeth. In a twinkling, Pinocchio felt fine. With one lump, he was with one leap he was out of bed and into his clothes. The fairy, seeing him run and jump around the room, gay as a bird, on wing, said to him, My medicine was good for you after all, wasn't it? Good indeed. It has given me new life. Why, then, did I have to beg you so hard to make you drink it? I'm a boy, you see, and all boys hate medicine more than they do sickness. What a shame. Boys ought to know, after all, that medicine taken in time can save you from much pain, even from death. Next time, I won't have to be begged so hard. I remember those black rabbits with the little black coffin on their shoulder, and I'll take that glass as... Oh, and poof! Down it will go. Come here now and tell me how I... I came about that you find yourself in the hands of the assassins. It happens that the fire eater gave me five gold pieces to give to my father, but on the way I met a fox and a cat who asked me, Do you want the five pieces to become two thousand? And I said, Yes. And they said, Come with us to the field of wonders. And I said, Let's go. Then they said, let us stop at the inn of the Red Lobster for dinner and ask after midnight. We'll set out again. We ate and went to sleep. When I awoke, they were gone, and I started out in the darkness all alone. On the road, I met two assassins dressed in black coal sacks, who said to me, your money or your life. And I said, I haven't any money. For, you see, I have put the money under my tongue. One of them tried to pull, put his hand in my mouth, and I bit it off and spit it out. But I wasn't, oh, but it wasn't a hand, it was a cat's paw. And they ran after me, and I ran and ran, until at last they caught me and tied my neck with a rope, and hanging me to a tree, saying, Tomorrow we'll come back for you, and you'll be dead, and your mouth will be open, and then we'll take the gold pieces that you have hidden under your tongue. Where are the gold pieces now? the fairy asked. I lost them, answered Pinocchio, but he told a lie, for he had them in his pocket, and he spoke his nose as he spoke, his nose, long though it was, became at least two inches longer. And where did you lose them? In the woods nearby. At the second lie, the nose grew a few more inches. If you lost them in the nearby wood, said the fairy, we'll look for them and find them. For everything that I, that is lost there is always found. Oh, now I remember, replied the maraschini. Becoming more and more confused, I did not lose the gold pieces, but I have swallowed them when I drank the medicine. At the third lie, the nose became longer than ever, so long that he could not even turn around. If he turned to the right, he knocked it again, 
against the bed and into the window pane. If he turned to the left, he stroked the walls or the door. If he raised it a bit, he almost put the fairy, poked the fairy's eyes out. The fairy sat looking at him and laughing. Why do you laugh? The maraschini asked her. Worried now at the sight of his worried now at the sight of his growing nose, I am laughing at your lies. How do you know I am lying? Lies, my boy, are known in a moment. There are two kinds of lies: lies with short legs and lies with long noses. Yours just now happens to have a long nose. Pinocchio, not knowing where to hide his shame, tried to escape from the room, but his nose had become so long that he could not get it out of the door. Crying as if his heart would break, the maraschino mourned for hours over the length of his nose. No matter how he tried, he could not go through the door. The fairy showed no pity towards him, as she was trying to teach him a good lesson, so that he would stop telling lies. The worst habit any boy may acquire. But when she saw him, pale with fright and with his eyes half out of his head from terror, she began to feel sorry for him and clapped her hands together. A thousand woodpeckers flew in through the window and settled themselves on Pinocchio's nose. They pecked and pecked so hard that the enormous nose, at the enormous nose that in a few minutes, it was the same size as before. How good you are, my fairy, said Pinocchio, drying his hands. And how much I love you. I love you too, answered the fairy. And if you wish to stay with me, you may be my little brother, and I'll be your good little sister. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's the end of it. Okay. So that's the end of Pinocchio. So if he wishes to stay with the good fairy who's trying to take care of him, give him medicine, bring his nose back down to a normal size, right, for him, because he's a, he's a piece of wood, right? He was made by a good man who just wanted a son. And he just wanted a son so badly that he made him out of wood, and then the good fairy came down and brought Pinocchio to life. So the good fairy is now at Pinocchio's side, and he says, How good you are, my fairy, said Pinocchio, drying his eyes, and how much I love you. All right, Pinocchio loves his fairy. I love you too, answered the fairy, and if you wish to stay with me, you may be my little brother. And I'll be your good little sister. So, or you may be, yeah, my little brother. And I'll be your good little sister. So, Pinocchio has found himself in a predicament where he gets to, maybe if he wants to, stay with his, stay with his fairy who's trying to take good care of him. Alright, let's do, here comes Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail. Hippity hoppity hippity hoppity Peter's on his way. Bringing all the toys and joy to all the little girls and boys. Hippity hoppity hippity hoppity Peter's on his way. Baby, today is May 9th and it is a cold day and it is Mother's Day. And I just, I love that you're my daughter and I miss you so much, you know. Mamas always love their babies, whether their babies are in heaven or whether their babies are on earth. And you have so much love for your children as a mother. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Like you just, you love your child so much and you are my child and I love you so incredibly much. Like you're just absolutely perfect, honey, and I miss you and I love you and I'd be with you every single second of the day if I could be, you know that because I had you. I had you every single second of the day when I had you. We went out to any place you wanted to go. We did museum days. We did um, all kinds of things. We did uh, library days where we'd go to the library and you'd listen to other people read you books because mama wanted you to have other people read you books. You got to go see your doctors. You got to go see, you know, your friends and hang out with them. Mama always had playdates set up for you. Mama was a part of so many mama groups because I wanted you to have such an interactive experience and be a part of your community. 
because it's so important to know other people have good connections and be a good part of your community. When you're around people, you always want to make people feel loved, seen, and accepted no matter what. I don't care how they treat you. Some people have bad days sometimes. Loved, seen, and accepted it is always, always, always important. Let's do... Oh, say, say, oh, playmates, come out and play with me. And bring your dollies three, climb up my apple tree, shout down my rain barrel, slide down my cellar door, and we'll be jolly friends forevermore, more, more. It was a sunny day, she could not go out to play. She said with tearful eyes, my dollies got the flu. Boo hoo 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 hoo, I ain't got no rain barrel. I ain't got no cellar door, but we'll be jolly friends forevermore, more, more. Because it's raining today, let's do. We sit and watch the rain as it falls from the sky. And we are glad to be inside where it is warm and dry. Oh yes, I do love the rain. It keeps the earth so clean and helps the pretty flowers grow from the mountains to the streams. Karina, baby, I love you and I miss you. I hope you know how much I love you. I love you incredibly much because you're my child. And that's what mamas do. They just love their babies. I love you and I want the best for you.